The first time I opened my eyes, I saw hydropower. I was born into the hydroelectric business. Our family's been hydropowered 60 years. My uncle and my father did the development on the first plant. We lived on a little farm down in the Eastern Cape. and uh, there was Electricity was an unknown thing in that part of the world at that time. Since 1978, Pat Downey has been an alternative energy pioneer. He designs micro hydroelectric power stations known more simply as micro hydros. Like their much larger cousins, these small plants generate electricity from kinetic energy released from falling water. But the similarity ends there. Until recently, Downey's small systems were too expensive to compete with grid electricity prices. But the increase in power costs and new technological breakthroughs have now driven consumers to his workshop in the small town of Hofmeyer, South Africa, about nine hours' drive from Cape Town. Yeah, hydropower was not economically viable because the, the government actually subsidized the production of electricity. So South Africa had one of the cheapest electricity rates in the world. That has now changed dramatically. Now subsidies are being reduced and, and national utility have now got to show a profit. They're not getting a handout from the government. South Africa's state-run energy company called ESCOM has raised electricity tariffs by 40% per year for the last few years and vows to continue. So Downey sprung into action and partnered with local engineer Dennis Clark to create Vortex Hydro Systems. The company helps farmers and rural communities develop small-scale hydroelectric power systems that reduce their power costs. But he doesn't just want to cut costs, he wants to clear the skies. Coal-fired nuclear power stations, I don't like those things. And I mean, what does a coal-fired power station do? Up you, when you get up in the Johannesburg area, you look at all the smog there, where's it come from? It comes from a coal-fired power station. People want the systems and they realize not only the advantages of generating their own power from a cost point of view, but also the, the effect it has on the environment. Microhydro is roughly classified as any plant that produces less than 300 kilowatts of electricity. Vortex Hydro markets cross-flow turbines like this one that produce about 56 kilowatts. This is enough power for roughly 20 homes. Each plant prevents about 16 tons of carbon and sulfur dioxides from being released by a coal-fired power station. But there is a stigma attached to microhydro power that has prevented it from being widely adopted. The biggest challenge is awareness of what it's really all about. Because the moment you mention hydropower, the thought comes up of massive dams, massive hydropower schemes. The advantage of, of microhydro is that you, you, you use a small portion of the river to generate the fall and without actually interfering with the flow. The environmental impact of a microhydro scheme on the ecology of a river is limited to the footprint of the turbine itself. Unlike large-scale dams like this one, the Harib Dam, which flood huge areas of land, cut off migrating species and cause habitat loss, Downey feels that the environmental benefits of microhydro systems far outweigh their small impact. It is ecologically sustainable because you, 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 you're not using a resource. I mean, in South Africa, water is a scarce resource, but you're only using the energy in the water. Downey has built more than 60 microhydro power stations across Africa. His turbines are generating power in Malawi, Lesotho, South Africa, and in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the government has commissioned two that he is currently working on. His most famous invention is used around the country. It's an electronic governor that automatically adjusts the electrical load on a spinning turbine. And I believe this was the first fully electronic governing system in this country. And it took a lot of development, but nine months I spent huddled over that little table there. And uh, but the rewards have been worth it. The energy in falling water has powered human systems like grain milling for thousands of years. And today, Downey believes, it is still one of the best hopes for removing our dependency on fossil fuels. If we could have thousands 
of micro hydros feeding into the national grid and shutting down our coal-fired power stations. That's, that's a dream.